to contain all of the characters necessary to write South African languages. Um, I don't know who of you uh, command any language that is not written in the Latin alphabet. So I know you do. <laughs> who else writes or reads a language that's not written in the Latin alphabet? Cyrillic, at least. <laughs> yeah. um, fonts is a big issue for some people um, to use computers. Um, I, I'm not going to go into details, but um, perhaps you can imagine if you visit a website and you just can't read it just because you don't have a font and you can't actually get a font easily sometimes, it's a big hassle. So we have tried to extend the font mostly for one South African language that has extended characters that are not that frequently used. We develop a keyboard layout so that we, uh, all South Africans would be able to type their languages with all the uh, characters that are required. We develop locales, that's a bit of a technical uh, software component used in most computers, so I'm not going to talk a lot about it. It's basically the, one of the initial building blocks to make software usable in other languages. We developed some spell checkers, and that's an ongoing project. We have done some terminology development, mostly with the aim of translating software. Um, and another major component of our work is translation tools. Uh, those of you that were here this morning heard when Zabina talked about uh, Fertal, which is one of our translation tools. And I'll be talking about that in the session, session after lunch again. So I'm not really talking about that more. Um, the Africa Network for Localization is a network of about 12 partner organizations, if I remember correctly, mostly over Africa, from Egypt to South Africa, where we are, um, that really wants to take the state of language technology in Africa forward. Um, there's a lot more that can be said about it, but as a basic introduction, we believe that part of the digital divide is really a language divide. So Wikipedia is humongous and it's great and it's, it has changed our lives, but if you can't read English or French or German, it's already not that interesting anymore. I mean, my home language, Afrikaans, is one of the foremost languages in Wikipedia in terms of African languages, but there are only 12,000 articles and they are of varying quality. And you can see that while Wikipedia is great, it means something entirely different for me than it does to you. In fact, it's almost not the same thing, even though it is exactly the same thing, sort of, in a way, entirely different. So, for me, it's a small reference work that's really available, but at high cost, for in terms of connectivity, varying quality, and so on. Um, so, some of the aspects that the African Network for Localization, some of the partner organizations are looking at are the locales that I mentioned, fonts, especially for West African languages, keyboards, to be able to type those languages, uh, those of you that attended the session in uh, the first parallel track, you might have met Martin Benjamin this morning. He's here this week. He's running the terminology project, uh, basically creating some small dictionaries for uh, software translation. The translation tools that I mentioned, there are aspects of training to train translators to become software translators. Um, some work on influencing policy decisions all over the continent to, to try to connect uh, the language policy and IT policy of governments and companies and so on. And then some things that really will showcase what we do. We are busy currently translating Firefox in about 10 African languages and things like that. I encourage you to have a look at the website of the IDRC who is doing a lot of development work through their funding. Um, and that's the website of the network if you want to have a look at some of the activities and outputs. Um, so what I want to talk to you about is this sort of the onslaught, as I like to call it, of when you work with technology in your language. This is probably something you've never seen in your life, even though I see it five times a week. I would be typing something absolutely normal, but the computer will tell me, you're wrong. What you're typing is not good. And uh, I don't know if you see what, what, what I'm trying to portray here, but this is supposedly a normal sentence, but for every word, it's, the computer is telling me, no, this word is wrong, that one's also wrong, that one's also wrong, and that one, yeah, it's equally wrong. All of them are wrong. And why is that? It's because I'm, I'm typing in a language for which it doesn't have a spell checker, or most likely it's actually configured to be expecting something else. Now, I'm lucky that I do have a spell checker for my language, but most languages, even in South Africa, we don't really have good spell checkers, and for most of our official languages, we don't have any spell checkers at the moment. Now, that's fine. I can still type that. It doesn't stop me from doing anything. I at least have a font for the language.
which I have a keyboard with which I can type all the characters. But the onslaught starts that moment I start to type. And the moment I finish the first word, it tells me, and you're wrong. This is not good enough. This is substandard. This computer is not really made for what you're busy with. And apart from the fact that I can't work as productively because I can't write a high quality text because I don't have a spell checker, there's a, a, a very strong subliminal message because the only time in my life where my writing looked like that was it was at school when my teacher really didn't like when I was doing it. It was really bad. That's the only time where my work looked like this. And this is some of what I'll be talking to you about is really um, some of the tools we've created with, um, with the aim of developing spell checkers, but I hope I will show to you why it's useful for a lot of other things, some of which uh, Francis will be talking about later today in the session after lunch. So really, um, there are two main tools that I'm talking to you about today. The one is called Corpus Catcher, the other one is called Spelt, and I'll show you how we used them and designed them with the idea of working specifically on spell checkers, which was our main aim, but they are useful for quite a few other things, uh, hopefully unimagined purposes that are still lying ahead. Um, the idea behind Corpus Catcher is to build a corpus of text. Now, a corpus is really just a collection, all right? It's a, it's a, a set of documents. Um, and for our purposes, in one language. They could be in different formats, they could be on any topic, it could be of any discourse type, it could be email or chatting or newspaper articles, it could be anything. But if we want to make spell checkers, we really want to do a survey of the language. We want to see, well, we're making a spell checker for Zulu, it's one of our South African languages. We want to see what does the text look like. Of course, we know Zulu, but the issue is that to make a spell checker by thinking of all words is basically impossible. And that has an exercise in futility anyway. Uh, and the web is a great resource, especially if you speak English. <laughs> Sorry, I had to get that one in. Um, but even in quite small languages, uh, there is a surprising amount of text on the web. All right? It has problems, which I'll talk about later. Um, but the idea is to use the web as a corpus and try to filter out the useful parts for whatever you want to do. So Corpus Catcher is a piece of software that will try to do that. It'll try to isolate the text. In other words, we don't want to deal with rich web pages and graphics and things like that. It's really about isolating the text. Uh, and then it's about filtering it out more to extract only the, uh, the, extract the text that seems to be ideal. That could mean only the ones in a certain language. It could mean only text of a certain discourse type if you're interested in a specific type of text. Let's say uh, newspaper or whatever the case may be. Uh, and uh, specifically because we are in Ireland, I want to give very big credit to a guy called Kevin Scannell, uh, who developed a big part of this idea as the web as a corpus. Uh, he has done major work in support for Irish language and computers. Um, uh, he has developed a spell checker, grammar checker, uh, hyphenation for word processors. Uh, if you use Firefox in Irish, it's his translations, and I think I could go on forever on the things he has done. He's an academic at um, St. Louis. Yeah. Sorry? St. Louis. St. Louis University. Thank you. So, uh, this, this, this is not our own idea. We have developed this ourselves, but it's really based a lot on his research. So, when we started doing this, I, I wrote him an email and said, We want to use your tools that you, yes, you have used. And he said, Well, it's a bit of an embarrassment, the quality, and he wouldn't really recommend it. He would recommend something else. Uh, sorry, I didn't mention it. They called. Um, I've forgotten the name. It was somebody else who wrote uh, a harvester for the web, and he would uh, recommend us to use that. And we, I gave it to my program and said, please set this up. And he said, well, I rewrote some parts of it, and then eventually he wrote, rewrote all of it, but with the idea that it's really easy to use, and um, it can achieve a little bit more. But before I go into that detail, I want to show you what the idea is. And it's really based on what a lot of other people have done. None of what I'm talking about here is revolutionary or groundbreaking. But hopefully you see how something really simple can allow you to do something powerful. This is sort of the, the classical or the prescribed uh, pipeline, but it's all optional. The idea is to start with a few seed words. Now that could mean anything. If I want to make a corpus of educational material in English, I might choose a few seed words that I strongly associate with my topic. I would use a word like teacher, degree, curriculum, lesson plan, or whatever the case may be, and make a list of 20.